looking at a nuclear powers uh, image and legacy. Um, my research question is how the perception of nuclear power has shifted from the 1970s and 80s and what people have done in favor and against it. And the answer to this is uh, pretty complicated. It could take an hour, but here's the short run. Uh, it shifts from being in this limbo state of being a positive force uh, and a negative force to more of an image of terror um, with the Three Mile Chernobyl and Fukushima accidents. Um, it also um, faces strong social and economic pushbacks um, across the world. And in a way, the pushback also led to the uh, surging rise of alternative energies, just like uh, solar and wind. Now, um, the anti-nuclear power movement technically comes from the anti-nuke movement, which starts in 1947. Um, could you guess who starts it? Well, <laughs> well, um, you might be surprised to learn that the original anti-nuke members were the people of the Manhattan Project, uh, specifically scientists who were against the use of the atomic bombs. Um, however, their influence wasn't too big, too mainstream. Um, and the whole anti-nuke movement doesn't really become mainstream until after the Cuban Missile Crisis, when the fear of nuclear war and a nuclear apocalypse uh, was rampant in the public discourse, uh, leading to a small but fairly loud uh, group um, in the 60s, uh, made up of hardcore environmentalists and the anti-war movement, um, specifically the anti-Vietnam War movement. Now, there's a, there's a brief jump to 1974 because this is the period where um, environmentalist groups, specifically like the Sierra Club, um, start to see uh, nuclear power closer to nuclear weapons. Because beforehand, uh, nuclear power was seen as this very, uh, not safe, well, safe source of energy. Um, but, as uh, the Siri Club and uh, actually people of the Earth uh, would argue is that they're no better than nuclear bombs. Um, and moving towards uh, 1979, we actually have a movie come out called uh, The China Syndrome. Um, and what it is about is basically a movie uh, showing like the hypothetical like scenario where a nuclear meltdown occurs. Um, it doesn't actually happen in the movie, but it's still like gives audience this sort of fear that it could happen at any point. Um, and it just so happened that just over a week after this movie was released, uh, the Three Mile accident happened. And well, afterwards, uh, everyone, everyone in the United States was panicking over the danger, at least what people thought was the danger. You see, um, in the Three Mile Island, there was a nuclear meltdown, but it wasn't exactly uh, radioactive, or at least it didn't have the damage that people thought it had. And part of the reason why this isn't so widely known is because the Carter administration decided to uh, not tell the public that there was no danger, saying that there was no point to inform the public. And well, if you don't tell anybody that there is no danger, well then everyone's gonna think there is and that you're just withholding it from them. And in an era where uh, movements saw a huge distrust in the government, this was just another reason to distrust the administration. Now, we're gonna have to, uh, excuse me, this also uh, can, uh, brings a um, important part of the anti-nuclear movement, and that's that this was not just something experienced in the United States. Even before 1947, the anti-nuke movement was started in Japan, technically, and 
in countries such as Japan and actually in West Germany, uh, we have people who really fear <clears throat> the threat of nuclear war. And as soon as Three Mile Island occurs, now all of a sudden there's a threat to, that nuclear power could be just as devastating to them. And what ends up happening is that activists from the United States end up working with activists in West Germany. Um, and you have an interesting mix uh, with the two, uh, groups from the two. Um, some of their tactics sort of uh, mix in, such as uh, civil disobedience. Um, in America, we're sort of used to civil disobedience being this peaceful, nonviolent sort of action. However, in West Germany, uh, nonviolence can sort of bend depending on the situation. Uh, for example, there's one case where uh, nonviolent protesters in West Germany um, decided that it was all right to smuggle in an RPG from uh, Russia and shoot it directly at a nuclear um, well, um, power station. And uh, the justification was that um, it was all right because no one got hurt. Meanwhile, if, if something like that happened in the U.S., uh, they would be called uh, domestic terrorists. Now, <clears throat> now we've got um, the next disaster, which is a legitimate threat, um, or a legitimate threat to people, and that was the Chernobyl accident in 1986. Um, as of today, uh, much of the land is still irradiated, though, uh, contrary to popular belief, there is a fair amount of space you can actually walk around, and if you um, wanted to, you could actually go to the reactor, or at least uh, the building. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, uh, things like uh, the HBO miniseries uh, Chernobyl um, have sort of uh, re returned us to a state where we're like fearing nuclear power. Um, but at the same time, we're also weirdly interested by it, uh, because at this point, uh, the greatest threat in Chernobyl is not actually radiation anymore, it's actually tourism. And that's one, because it's destroying the land that has been sort of locked in time and two, because tourists have unfortunately taken radioactive substances uh, material too. And that's sort of uh, moving in today. Um, but also, we've got the Fukushima incident too. Um, in 2011, uh, which, which backing up before that, uh, there was going to be a resurgence in nuclear power but because of the Fukushima disaster in 2011, uh, nearly every uh, nuclear reactor in Japan has now been offline, and more recently, uh, Germany has now shut down the rest of their nuclear reactors. So I wanna go fo focusing on the danger versus the reality. And here I've got a, tr a graph showing uh, the rough uh, death rates uh, per um, <clears throat> per terawatts of uh, each power. And so far, coal uh, has the number one death rate per terawatt uh, with wind, solar, and nuclear as the most safest. Um, and just to get more specific numbers, uh, Chernobyl specifically had 31 deaths since 1979, while Fukushima's only had one. Um, and mean, <coughs> <coughs> meanwhile, there had been over 3,000 deaths because of the tsunami and earthquake that hit Fukushima. Though, um, estimates still range that there could be five to 10,000 to even 500,000 uh, deaths from uh, radiation poisoning in the next 30 years. So, uh, nuclear power has shifted from this dangerous sort of safe 
power to Okay, okay. Uh, so nuclear power has, sh <laughs> has shifted from uh, this dangerous substance in the 70s and 80s to now more having a resurgence uh, lately. Uh, protesters across the nation and across the world have come together uh, using different tactics, but all either for or against nuclear power. And in a, as a result of the protests in the 70s and 80s, uh, solar and wind have gotten a significant uh, amount of use and uh, hopefully a, uh, will replace coal, oil, and uh, natural gas. Uh, thank you. Thank you.